everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Bucket Coding and today I'm going to be doing something with the scheduler. Now what the scheduler is, is basically it allows you to run delayed or um, d just uh, delayed or scheduled or repeating tasks over and over and what that, what that means if getting even more basic is uh, you can tell it to do something over and over and over uh, or you could set it to set this thing to happen at a certain time or uh, or something like that um, so what what I have here is I have this quick event uh, and I forgot to register <laughs> uh, get get server uh, get server dot get plugin manager dot register events this this um, so now that we have that uh, what we're able to do is we're able to do all sorts of different ways or there's all sorts of different ways to do tasks now there's bucket runnables or there's the uh, direct scheduler methods as the and direct scheduler methods I don't think is the actual name uh, but that's what I call it so if we type bucket dot get server dot get scheduler this is using uh, what I call the direct scheduler now I don't really do this all that much because I don't I, I, I kind of want to keep my tasks all um, in one place kind it's it's a it's complicated uh, but if we go ahead and make a new package uh, package with our task inside and what we're gonna be doing is per request my boy crazy kid he's a he's a helper on uh, on Saurus and he he wants to know how to do this so I'm gonna attempt to do it on video um, and because he, he's a little confused by some stuff and I wanted to wanted to help him out a little bit too um, so yeah what we're gonna do is we're gonna say in um, in cycle task and that's what it's gonna be so you can see, yeah, we can do we can do a static method like public static void run, then put our runnable in there, or we can do extends bucket runnable, and now you can see since bucket runnable is an abstract class, we have public void run, and now what we can do is we if we instantiate our in ta cycle task class, which basically means we create a new instance of it, um, so I'm gonna do that really quick in cycle task in cycle task equals new cycle task then we can see or as you can see in cycle task and dot uh, we have all these running things so now I'm gonna actually go ahead and write our code here uh, we're going to have a map and this is going to allow us to store all of our data so we're gonna say string for the players name and we're going to have an inventory now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, actually set this equal to something so we're gonna say um player menu uh, player in data equals new and we're gonna make it in equal to a new hash map uh, and that's basically a way of storing stuff I don't I think I've gone over this before just wanted to recap there uh, and right here what we're gonna say is we're gonna say inventory in equals bucket dot uh, create inventory actually no what we want to do is we want to just say inventory in uh, basically equals null now what we can do is we can go in here and say if player in data dot cont uh, dot contains or no, dot, uh, let's see get e dot get player dot get name um, does not equal null. So if there is a value inside of oh rip <laughs> uh, if there is uh, a value inside of our map. Um, with the player's name in it then we're gonna say oh yeah okay uh, we know that we know that there's data in there so we're just gonna set in equal to uh, player in data dot get for you dot get player dot get name and now we have our in and then otherwise if there is none uh, then we're just gonna go ahead and say bucket dot create inventory null and nine yeah so basically upon first running this um, it is going to uh, well, upon typing in um, exclamation point inf, um, like exactly like this, what it's going to do is it's going to make a, a null inventory object, and we're going to get this uh, this data map here, and we're going to check if there is already an inventory inside. That's what this is here, and if there is, then yeah, we're going to set inf in uh, the inventory object equal to what's already in here, and if there is nothing. We'll do this, and then what we're also going to do is we're going to add the inventory to the to the data um, to the database. I guess what you could say it's not really a database, um, but you know, uh, to to the to the map or the the storage. I guess is what you what's a better example of that. 
Uh, so now, uh, yeah, it'll constantly be using the same inv inventory. Uh, we can go do stuff in in cycle task here. But let's actually go ahead and say get player dot open inventory in. Boom. We don't need anything else in here. This is the only code we need for our event. This is just making the inventory. You can do this however you want. Um, and now what we need to go to ahead and do in here is we need to write our code. So we want to say for player p colon bucket dot get dot get online players. Um, and actually, let's make this a little bit better. What we want to do is we want to say for um, we actually need to make a, a get instance method really quick because we're using multiple class classes private static episode 19 instance instance um, instance equals this uh, public static episode 19 get instance uh, and then this just what this does is it allows us to uh, use the episode 19 class anywhere just by calling episode 19 get instance uh, let's go ahead and do that for um, let's make this we can turn this map public why not for episode 19 dot get instance dot player and data dot size uh, we actually need to make this a um, a for loop uh, for I is equal to zero uh, I to I is less than that uh, I plus plus this is our basic loop here so for every single player inside of our inside of our data here because we don't want to run through every single player online like I was trying to do because that would cause some lag in the server if you're not running this task uh, async and I will get into all the async and all the, the, the I guess the types of tasks um, in a second as soon as we get done with this part uh, but now we can go ahead and say inventory um, inv equals episode 19.get instance dot player and data dot get uh, for episode 19 dot get instance dot uh, actually what we can do here instead of all this code this nasty code uh, dot get null we're just gonna say get null for now and we're going to say player p equals bucket bucket dot get player for episode 19 dot get instance dot player and data dot get for i um, let's see here oh um no okay we need to get it for actually hmm hold on just a second let me okay never mind about that uh, that was me trying to be brilliant, but I wasn't. Um, and now let's go ahead and get, let's see here, dot get, uh, I forgot we, it's hard to, um, uh, go through a hash map and do this. So I suppose what we could do is we could do a quick, um, player loop. I guess it really doesn't matter, um, too, too much. As long as we run this async, we'll have to remember to do that. So we do not run this asynchronously or asynchronously. I can't pronounce it. Uh, then we're screwed. <laughs> uh, so if episode nineteen dot get instance dot player and data dot get um, for p dot get name uh, equals equals null and return otherwise episode, uh, inventory in equals episode nineteen dot get instance dot player and data dot get for p dot get name. There we go, we have our inventory object now. And it's actually working, which is pretty nice. Um, boom, oh, rip, rip, there we go. All right, so we have our inventory. We're just gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna make a quick integer value here, int, uh, final, no, actually. Um, let's go ahead and set, up. let's go ahead and have one, uh, just a static one here. Actually, no, we don't need it to be static because we have our good instance. Public int. Um, cycle equals zero. Oh, rip. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at doing that. Um, if episode 19 dot get instance dot cycle equals equals one equals equals zero actually. Else episode episode 19 dot get instance dot cycle um, minus minus 
and let's go ahead and copy that here. Oh, rip. What the? What to heck? Boom. And cycle plus plus if it does equal zero. All right, so now that we have our basic loop here, uh, it'll go through this cycle, and if it's equal to zero, it's gonna do this. Otherwise, it's gonna do this, basically. Um, so yeah, now what we can do is say int.set item, we're going to set the first item to, um, well, let's actually, ooh, do, 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 do. Um, let's go ahead and delete that. Let's say item, oh, rip, item stack item equals uh, new item stack material dot skull item one and then byte three so that's a data value if you didn't know I think I've gone over that before skull meta because we know it's a skull skull meta um, skull meta equals skull meta item dot item dot get item meta um, Okay, that's that's it. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to say skull meta dot set owner. We're gonna set it equal to mhf underscore um, question. Um, and as soon as we do that, item dot no item dot set set item meta to be skull meta. And m dot set item zero to be item. Uh, actually, it set this to four, so it'll be in the middle of the inventory, and then, um, yeah, that, that should work. Okay, now let's go ahead and copy this code down here. Boom. Change the username to something like um, Hero Brian or something. So you can see um, that should work. Yep. Okay. So now what we need to do is go down here. Uh, we can delete this to do. And we want to say in cycle task, we already have that object made from before. And we can do all these here. We can run run the task timer async. We can just run it. We can we'll run it once. We can run it once with the plugin, which is actually should that should that's probably a good idea. Um, we can run this later async, we can run this later, we can cancel it, or we can just run it async. I'm gonna be running it async uh, with timer just because um, async will not well it, it basically it, it helps with server performance so if you're running a big network you're gonna want to use async quite a lot for a lot of stuff that you do uh, especially SQL you'll probably want to run that async uh, so now let's go ahead and say uh, we'll run this on get instance we're gonna run this with a delay of zero so it's gonna happen right away as soon as they type that in or change it every 40 seconds and now that is our code, so it should work uh, in theory. Let's go ahead and build these art this artifact here, and I'll go ahead and move this over here, uh, and go ahead and set up our interesting environments. <laughs> um, uh, we need this server. Yep. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop this out. Do we have any artifacts? There we go. Yep. That's what I wanted. Reveal in finder. <laughs> uh, that's weird. View name. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Folders weren't appearing for some reason. That was weird. All right. So now we can now delete episode eighteen. Goodbye. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> I don't have my headphones on, by the way. If you're if you're curious what I was talking about. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. If there's any errors, I will fix them. There shouldn't really be any errors because of the way we set this up. Um. And yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna type in this inv command first, um, and then test. Either way, it doesn't matter which order you do them in because of this line here. But if you were to say remove that line and remove the else and all that, um, and you had this task going, and you weren't checking if there was null, that's gonna throw a ton of uh, a ton of null pointer exceptions at you, saying, yeah, there is no data here. Um, and they're basically what's what's what we have is null. It's void. There's nothing um, Which is not good. We want there to be something in our data in our data map for the task to work Let's go ahead and wait for Minecraft to actually like me. There we go. Okay <laughs> Takes forever to load things when you're recording. It's crazy 
All right, let's go ahead and wait for this thing to load. It's almost there. Here it is. Here comes the Minecraft. It's probably really awkward for everyone watching. I, I apologize. <laughs> Come on. Yup. Rip. Do 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 do. <laughs> That's what I do in my free time. I just jiggle windows around. All right, here we go. <laughs> Uh, multiplayer test server here we go let's go ahead and check this guy out so you can see we logged in uh, and if we go ahead and start this task or not start the task yet we're gonna say and in boom so we got our inventory it looks like it was working so we now have something in the database we go ahead and type in test and now we type in inv again boom there we go so it's swapping between them every so often we set it to go every two seconds I believe uh, let me see yeah, every two seconds. So it's just going to swap between. You can see we can do all sorts of stuff. We can do stuff with the lore. I'll actually demonstrate that now um, just by adding a lore really quickly. So skull meta, skull meta dot set lore arrays dot as list. We're going to say um, um, who? <laughs> Uh, for the question and then mwahahaha or something in like bold red um, mwahahaha and now what we can do is we can say chat color dot red plus import that from bucket and now you can see we now have the lore changing as well so we can go ahead and re-export this um, I'll go ahead and copy that jar file there we go and paste it over into plugins Boom, okay. So now that task is actually no longer running. Ha ha ha. Uh, now we just gotta type in inv and then slash test and then inv again. So you see it's who? Ha ha ha. And you see it's swapping through inventories and there's no bugs at all because I'm so amazed. No, I'm just kidding. I'm awful. Um, so yeah, that is how you successfully do that now if you if you were to change this to run task timer and you were running a huge server like a big network it's gonna lag even even so you can see it's lagging that's just because I'm recording I think uh, the TPS should yeah you can see the TPS is getting a little bit bigger um, now uh, but yeah your, your TPS shouldn't go down very much um, while testing or what well, what if you're recording like me it's gonna lag of course that's kind of expected um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Bucket Coding. Uh, you can see what we did here. We made two items pop in and out of the inv. Um, the inventory is always the same for every player. Of course, we can actually take it out. Um, <laughs> we can start getting a ton of, uh, of heads this way because we didn't cancel uh, clicking. But you know, it really doesn't matter as long as the proof of concept is there. You can go do whatever you want with it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Bucket Coding. Uh, drop your suggestions down below. If you have anything you want me to cover or any ideas, go ahead and make sure to let me know because I will most likely do them. This was partially requested by my, my friend Crazy, like I mentioned before. And a future tutorial will be recommended um, by someone on Twitter. I don't remember their username, but they asked for SQL tutorials, and I will give them SQL tutorials eventually. Uh, and next episode will be episode 20, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm not going to do anything special until like 25. Um, and that'll probably be some random concept. Um, but yeah, so you can see here we got this going. It's pretty cool, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.